hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, starting at verse 34. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are all witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us, who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone believes in him, receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The second reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, starting at verse 11. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. There are times that on Easter Day I proclaim boldly the profound impact of the resurrection. And I want to do that today, but perhaps more intimately and more personally. I am a person who cries, and I'm often surprised by what prompts me to cry. Dramatic harkers, the Queen's speeches, emotional movies, relief after immense effort. I've cried in church meetings, uttering sounds I didn't know were in me. I've cried when a project into which I put a great effort came to nothing, and I had to wrestle with my frailties. I confess that up to about 25 years ago, I wasn't much given to crying. 
but then for about 10 years, I attended to complaints of sexual misconduct in the National Church. It was my practice that when I received a complaint, I would shut my office door and read what people had written, and the tears would fall. Accounts of how what had been precious and life-giving had been taken from people, and I was drawn into grief. Only as I look back now do I realise just how much those experiences changed me, and I believe in the process how God changed me. And so I come to the story today, and I feel its pathos. Mary Magdalene stood weeping outside the tomb. Just days before, she'd been at the foot of the cross, and she'd seen Jesus die. And she knew that Joseph and Nicodemus had wrapped his body with spices and in linen cloths, and that they'd placed his body in the tomb in the garden. So now, days later, she came back to that tomb. And as if his death wasn't enough, they'd taken away his body. The angels, sitting where the body of Jesus had been placed, asked Mary, Why are you weeping? Now, it strikes me as a strange question. These angels must have been emotionally unintelligent. Or perhaps the question was put there for a reason. And given that Easter can be popularly thought of as a time of unbounded joy and relentless positivity, it is a strange question to intrude. And yet it is asked twice of Mary Magdalene which suggests that Easter Day is a day for asking that question. Why do you weep? And why do you weep at this time? There are people under considerable strain at present. There are people whose businesses have closed or which are hanging by a thread. There are people who have already been made redundant or have had their salaries reduced or sense that it's just on the horizon. There are families under immense strain. My sister told me of times at the end of World War II that after she had gone to bed, she would hear our mother weeping in a darkened front room. Other soldiers had returned but she had heard nothing about our Father. And Easter Day invites us into that front room and into every front room, every such room, where people grieve and where people grieve in anticipation of what might happen. They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. It's not just the loss, is it? It's the not knowing, the uncertainty, and the fear of what might be. I'm always taken by the fact that Jesus came to Mary looking so ordinary that she mistook him for the gardener. And he comes to us that way still, plain, so camouflaged that we miss him entirely unless we have a sense of who he is and what he does and how he sounds. And then Jesus says Mary's name and she recognises him. And then he says, don't hold on to me. Well, it's a tall order. She'd let him go once and look what happened. Why now? Because the life, the irrepressible life, the overflowing life and love that pulsated in this human being, this Christ, 
was for more than Mary Magdalene. Christ was for every person in every room with everyone that weeps. Sometimes the spirit of resurrection is victory and triumph and thine be the glory risen conquering sun. And we're going to sing, sing that at the end of the service and rightly so. But sometimes the spirit of resurrection is in encountering the tender presence of a loving Christ. Someone so ordinary as to be mistaken as the gardener, so quiet as to be noticed only when he speaks our name and calls to us. Sometimes, I think, the victory of Easter has been being given the strength to attend to this question, why do you weep? Over what do you weep? In order that we might know the deep life we call eternal life. Now, of course, the resurrection is only the beginning. There is more to come, more life, more love, more justice, more praying, more communing. And being able to say with Mary, however timorously, however confidently, I have seen the Lord. And so the news spreads, and the prayer grows, and the communion multiplies.